God is life, truth, light. He is love. He is the supreme good. But he is no God who merely satisfies the intellect if he ever does. God to be God must rule the heart and transform it. There won't be much person in this world who is untouched by the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi, the chief advocate of Ahimsa and Satyagraha, the father of our nation. October 2nd, when the world celebrates the birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi as Gandhi Jayanti, let's travel through the life of this great leader. This is Jaran with you. Welcome to Teach You Smart. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, also known as Mahatma Gandhi, was born on 2nd October 1869 to Karamchand Gandhi and Putli Bai in Port Bandar, Gujarat. Gandhiji received his primary education in Port Bandar because his father was the Divan or Chief Minister of Port Bandar, the state of British India. During his younger age, Gandhiji was not so bright. He was an average student. He was not well in any academics or in any sport activity. He was a shy and a timid student. However, he grabbed some important aspects of education, including morals. At the age of 11, he had to move to Alfred High School in Rajkot, Gujarat, due to his father's new appointed job. Gandhi learned by writing on sand using his fingers, which is why his handwriting was never pleasing. But there was a lot of improvements in his performance in high schools. Gandhi scored good in various subjects, including English. His high school life was challenging. At the age of 13, he was married to Kastuba. They later had four children. His father's illness challenged his education more. Despite the educational challenges, he managed to complete his high school and passed the matriculation exam from Samaldas Arts College in Gujarat. Gandhiji wanted to become a doctor, but after his father's death in 1885, his friends and family suggested him to take his father's place in the state service and to become a barrister. He traveled to study law at the University College London and to train as a barrister. Gandhiji's idea of education was mainly focused on character building, moral values, ethics, and free learning. During his time in London, he took his studies seriously and joined a public speaking practice group which helped him to overcome his shyness sufficiently to practice law. After passing his bar exams in London, Gandhi returned to India to practice law. But he took a short trip to South Africa to be a lawyer for Abdullah's cousin, a successful shipping businessman in South Africa. But he ended up staying for 20 long years. Gandhiji lived a life of a rich lawyer. He had a wealthy lifestyle. He was wearing western suits. He was living well. On a train journey to Peter Maritzburg, a white passenger objected Gandhiji's presence in a first class carriage. Even though he had a first class ticket, he was thrown out of the train. It's from here the big fights of Gandhiji for mankind started. He resolved to stay and fight for inequality in South Africa. During this time, the rise of Satyagraha, which is non-violent resistance or civil resistance, took place. Before returning to India, he advocated the blacks and helped them gain the right to vote in South Africa, which made him a global saint. In 1915, when Gandhiji returned to India, he was a totally changed man. The barrister has become a political activist. Trading his western dress for a dhoti, the traditional dress of the Indian poor. He set up to socialize with the people to understand the problems of his homeland, traveling by train across the country, always in a third class. The momentum of independence was gaining. 
Gandhiji addressed the crowd of every town and village he visited and spoke of human dignity, justice and independence. Nationalists in the India protested by burning textiles imported from the England. Gandhiji, on the other hand, launched the Charka movement to boycott textiles produced in Manchester and Liverpool. From the beginning to the end, the struggle for independence was led by the National Congress Party and Gandhiji was its guiding light. The British countered people with violence, while Gandhiji's weapons were civil disobedience and non-violent resistance. Colonial repression was often brutal and prisons were full. In 1917, Chambaran Satyagraha was the first civil disobedience movement led by Gandhiji for the farmers who were forced to grow indigo by the British planters. Chambran movement is called the first experiment of Satyagraha by Gandhiji. It was during this time that Gandhi was named Bapu and Mahatma by the people. Due to high floods and droughts in 1918, farmers in Gujarat faced a huge loss in failed crops. The authorities not only refused the remission but also increased the taxes in Kedah by 23%. This is when Sardar Vallabhai Patel along with Gandhiji started the Kedah Sadhyagraha leading the farmers to protest against tax collection. This led to make authorities give up and suspended the tax for the next year and the authorities were forced to return the confiscated property even though the British had officially said it would stand by the buyers. Next is the Khilafat movement which was in 1919. This was a movement led by the Indian Muslims to pressurize British government to bring the authority of the Ottoman Sultan as their religious leader after the World War I. Mahatma Gandhi supported the Khilafat movement to unite Hindus and Muslim religions and revolt against the British Empire. Gandhiji became a prominent spokesperson. He even returned the medal he received from the Empire. His role in this moment made him a national leader. In 1920 was the non-cooperation movement. After the bloodbath of Jallianwala Bagh, where almost 379 people killed and about 1,200 were wounded, with the firing of 1,650 rounds by the British, Gandhiji initiated the non-cooperation movement, where he advised the Indians to resign their titles, boycotting government education, institutions, the courts, government services, foreign goods, elections, and eventually refusing to pay taxes. Gandhiji set the goal as Swaraj or self-governance, which since then became the motto of Indian freedom movement. In 1930, Gandhiji led a three-week salt march, which they marched 388 kilometers, which is called as Dandi March or Dandi Satyagraha, which was a non-violent protest against the British monopoly on assault production in the Dandi village. The march was a great victory, which captured the world attention, which made British to take action. Gandhi and his followers were arrested. Gandhiji was jailed seven times for a total of four years, while his follower Jawaharlal Nehru eight times, serving nine years. Finally, the Quit India Movement in 1942. Quit India Movement was the last mass movement started by Mahatma Gandhi on 8th August 1942 during the World War II, asking for an end to the British rule in India. Gandhiji asked Indians to do or die. The Quit India movement united the Indian people against the British rule. 
Upon his release in 1944, Gandhiji went on a 21 days fast. By the end of the Second World War, Britain's place in the world has changed dramatically and the demand for independence could no longer be ignored. As we saw from the beginning, till the Indian independence, Gandhiji had a great role in bringing people together without any discrimination to stand strong for the nation's freedom. In July 6, 1944, it was Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose on a Singapore radio addressed Mahatma Gandhi as the father of the nation. Mahatma Gandhi, with his leadership and movement, along with many other national leaders and freedom fighters against the British rule, resulted in the independence of India in 1947. On January 13, 1948, Nathuram Vinayaga Godse, a Hindu nationalist, assassinated Mahatma Gandhi by shooting in the chest three times at point-blank range during a prayer meeting in Birla House in New Delhi. It was just two days after Gandhi's words of, If I am to die by the bullet of a madman, I must do so smiling. God must be in my heart and on my lips, and if anything happens, you are not to shed a single tear. In the evening, the country knew the demise of Papuji through the voice-breaking sound of Nehru. Friends and comrades, the light has gone out of our lives and there is darkness everywhere. Though the father of the nation left the world just one year after Indian independence, his thoughts and ideals will live on forever to influence people to make the world a better place. Thank you.